Welcome to the channel. It was time to get rid of that plastic bumper that came stock on our Jeep Gladiator Rubicon EcoDiesel. In this video, I'll share my experience installing a Warren Elite full width bumper, a Warren Xeon 10S winch on that bumper, a winch electrical disconnect, the Warren skid plate that matches the Warren Elite bumper. I'll be putting on the winch line and a Factor 55 flat link to finish it off. This video is not sponsored. All these parts I bought with my own money and I chose them because I thought they were the best parts for what we do with our Jeep. Made in USA was a huge factor in picking out these parts. And I'm happy to say all the major parts are made in the US. I'm including timestamps in the description of the video if you want to jump ahead. I appreciate you watching. And I hope you find the video useful. Pop this box open and see what kind of view you can get of this thing. The bumper comes in a huge box with a thick pad of foam under it. It's also covered in a black protective cloth. There's a box of hardware included in the box. The hardware is nuts, bolts, fog light brackets, and winch plate brackets, and the installation directions. The bumper is formed out of 10 gauge steel. All the bends and angles add a huge amount of strength while keeping the weight down. There are two massive tow hooks welded into the front of it, and a built in winch plate on the back side. You'll see the winch plate later in the video. Let's move on to the next step in this bumper install. Removing the plastic bumper. The first step in installing the new bumper is removing the old bumper, which in my case was a plastic bumper that came stock on the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. You may have a different bumper you're replacing, but they're all similar and removing them is pretty easy. I had the steel skid plate that came stock on our Jeep Gladiator. I had to remove, yours may be plastic. Unplug the fog lights, and remove the eight nuts and take the bumper off. At this point, you can recycle the plastic bumper or try to sell it, but there's a lot of them out there that people are trying to sell. I'm gonna save my fog lights and throw this bumper away. Saving the fog lights and fog light wiring harness. If you're planning on using the fog lights and fog light harness from your plastic bumper in your new bumper, you'll have to disassemble the plastic bumper to remove them. Start by removing the push pins holding the end caps in. I used a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers. There are quite a few of them to remove. Removing the end caps will give you access to the fog lights. You can now remove the fog lights. You can also access the nuts holding the metal part of the bumper in. When you remove the metal part of the bumper, you'll also have access to the tow hooks. I removed mine and saved them. I don't know if I'll ever use them, but they're a pretty nice product, so I thought I'd save them in case they came in handy someday. Now you can remove the plastic clips holding the wiring harness in and remove that and save that for later install. There's some prep you have to do to get the new bumper ready to be installed. To prep the bumper, I had to get into the box containing my new Xeon 10S winch and take out the new fair lead. The bolts holding the fair lead in are difficult to access once the winch is installed. It's advisable to install the fair lead prior to installing the bumper in the winch. The Warren fair lead is a high quality aluminum part. The fair lead kept swinging out of the way and I couldn't get the bolt in. So I found that by using a needle nose pliers as a third hand in the opposite hole, that stopped the fair lead from swinging and allowed me to get the first bolt started. Because the fair lead has a recessed hole where the cap nut attaches to the bolt, fingers don't fit in there. I used a socket to get the nut started. After you get the nuts and bolts in to the fair lead, make sure it's aligned evenly with the edge of the bumper so you end up with a nice looking installation. The fair lead is a nice looking part and complements the Warren Elite bumper. Installing the carriage bolts. The original bumper used eight bolts to hold it in. The new Warren Elite bumper is going to use six. You install the carriage bolts and you put a push nut bolt retainer on it 
to stop the bolt from falling out when you go to install the bumper. I used a flat bar to back up the bolts and I used a socket and a rubber mallet to install the push nut bolt retainers. The reason there's only six bolts in the Warren Elite bumper holding it on and eight bolts in the original bumper is because the frame rail needs to be trimmed to accommodate the Warren Xeon winch installation. Later, we'll add another attachment point to the bumper. Trimming the fog lamps. To reuse the OEM fog lamps, it's necessary to trim them. There's a left and a right, so you trim opposite sides of each fog lamp as each fog lamp is exactly the same. I held the fog lamp in the new bracket up to the bumper and guesstimated where it needed to be trimmed. After marking what I thought should be trimmed off, I used my aviation snips to start cutting the plastic. After trimming as much as I could with my shears, I turned to the Dremel to smooth everything up. After trimming up and smoothing out the fog lamp, you use the included hardware to attach the fog lamp to the bracket. Now it's just a matter of properly positioning the fog lamp in the bumper and using the included hardware to attach the bracket to the bumper. These fog lamps are adequate, but they're a little flimsy after you get done trimming them and mounting them. I contacted Warren to see if they recommended any that fit particularly in that bumper, but I don't think I ever got a response. The fog lamps are in, they look okay. After the bumper is installed, they'll require aiming. The winch plate brackets. The winch plate brackets provide another point of attachment to the frame rails on the vehicle. These are especially important when installing a winch in your bumper because they stop the bumper from twisting or torquing when load is applied with a winch. The bolts will be left loose for now. When the bumper is installed, there will be two bolts that go from the winch plate bracket to the frame rails. After all the nuts are on, everything can be tightened up. Trimming the frame rails. The interior gusset on the frame rail gets removed and the frame rail gets trimmed to accommodate the worn Xeon winch. These gussets are on the inside of each of the frame rails. Two of them have to be removed. The directions show you the area of the frame rail that needs to be trimmed. That's why we go from eight to six bolts because we actually lose one hole. I used a grinder with a cutting wheel to cut the frame rail and I put some cardboard in front of the grill to protect the paint. After trimming both frame rails and smoothing them out, getting all the burrs off, it's time to apply some paint to prevent rust. I had some black Rust-Oleum left over from another project, so I painted some of that on the frame. Installing the bumper. If you're getting value out of the video, please consider liking and subscribing and help me grow the channel. Installing this bumper is really a two-man job. The Warner Elite bumper is not the heaviest bumper, but it's heavy enough to be a challenge to install by yourself. I used a couple of five gallon buckets to help me hold up the bumper while I positioned the bolts in the holes on the frame rails. I got two nuts started and that let me get underneath the bumper to get the rest of the nuts on. Installing the winch. This is a Warren Xeon 10S winch. The S is for synthetic and in this case the synthetic line is Spidura. The Xeon winch has an aluminum drum instead of a steel drum. It wasn't quite as heavy as I expected. There's four pockets on the base of the winch that hold the four nuts that hold the winch in. I put the nuts in with some crazy glue to hold them in there so when I was putting the winch in, 
the nuts would not fall out. The hoop on the bumper is not removable. It's welded onto the bumper. Fortunately, the hoop is large enough that a winch will pass through it. I got the winch electrical cables fed through ahead of time, so that way I would only have to push a small portion of them through as I was installing the winch. Little by little, I was able to feed the electrical cables through and the, feed the winch through without scratching up the bumper or scratching up the winch. The Gladiator Rubicon Eco Diesel is a very capable vehicle. With the addition of a winch and an off-road bumper, its capability is enhanced. Crazy gluing the four nuts in the winch base made it relatively easy to get the four bolts that hold the winch in to the winch plate. With the bumper and winch installed and all the nuts and bolts tightened to torque specs, it was time to route the winch electrical cables to the battery. I found some good routing under the hood for the positive and negative winch electrical wires. Winch electrical disconnect. I found this high quality marine disconnect on one of the Jeep forums and ordered one. There's a bracket that's unused underneath the hood of my Eco Diesel, and that's what I'm going to attach my custom made stainless winch disconnect plate to. I ended up hooking up my winch electrical cables to the disconnect, bolting the disconnect together, and then pop riveting onto my little plate, and then attaching the plate to the bracket. I'm really happy with the way the winch disconnect came out, and it's just a safety factor, so there's not power going to the winch all the time. It takes a little force to turn it, so I know that's gonna, gonna be wiggling around when you're driving. And it looks to be a quality product, and I think it's gonna work out. There's not much room under the hood of an Eco Diesel. Installing the Warren Elite skid plate. This one here, the original Jeep Mopar skid plate that came on the Gladiator. Uh, I wanted to try to reuse it. It wasn't gonna get reused. It does not fit with the, with the Warren bumper. This, anybody needs one of these, you're in the San Jose area, check the description for this video, contact information. Um, if you're in the area and you need one of these, we'll make you a good deal on it. Uh, just going to be cluttering up my garage. So the skid plate I do need is inside this box. Let's see what we got here. Kind of nice they put this soft bag. Keeps everything nice in the box. Keeps it from getting damaged. But that's it. You can see once it's on there, if it has the coverage that the Mopar skid plate has. But that's one more thing to do here to help finish this bumper and winch install. I got the skid plate installed. And I have to say, all the years that I've been doing mechanical work, these were some of the absolute most difficult nuts and bolts to fasten up that I've ever had to do. The sway bar disconnect is right in your way the whole time you're trying to install it. And some of the bolts are just plain in difficult spots to get to. It matches the bumper perfectly and it seems like it will offer a lot of protection. And it's also another part that's made in the United States of America. If you're going to install a Warren bumper, if there's a skid plate available, order it at the same time that you order your bumper. The winch line. I'm not going to offer up any instruction on how to install this Warren Spidora winch line onto the winch. Warren has some great videos out there that are easy to find, and they show you exactly how to do it. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be and I'm happy with the way it came out. The Spidera winch line is a very high quality line and it comes with a nice protective coating to protect the winch line from the drum. There's an excellent eye spliced professionally on to the end of the winch line. Factor 55 flat link. Take this out of the box, check this out. 
this one gets put on with this by taking out a uh, snap ring. Factor 55. And these guys, they make great products. Another US made product. Flat link, you simply remove the snap ring with some snap ring pliers, remove the pin. The pin goes through the hook that's spliced onto the winch line, put the snap ring back in, and you're done. On my other Jeep, I bought the splicer flat link and spliced it on to the winch line myself. That was pretty cool to learn how to do that, and it's something everybody should know. You never know when you're going to have to splice a winch line together. This is not the fanciest flat link they make, but it's really nice. You can put a soft shackle through it, and you can also hook it directly onto a tow hook. It'll sit right flat up against the fair lead and has some rubber pads to protect the fair lead and the flat link from getting scratched up. Now I get some power to the winch by turning the disconnect to on. And then I'll reel this flat link in till it's flat up against the fair lead where it's ready whenever needed. The winch line needs stretching before you use it, and there's some great videos from Warren on exactly the procedure to use to do that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget, the best is yet to come.